Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book The Outsiders, 8 Unconventional CEOs and Their Radically Rational Blueprint for Success. Who is the greatest CEO of the last 50 years? Your most likely answer would certainly resonate with many others, Jack Welch. From 1981 to 2001, he generated a compound annual return of 20.9% for General Electric. For every $1 invested in GE stock when Welch became the CEO, you would have $48 when he stepped down. During his tenure, he was a regular on the cover of Fortune magazine. He represents a recognized management style that emphasizes active monitoring of operations and maintaining regular communication with Wall Street while keeping a close eye on stock prices. In public perception, Welch is the standard used to measure all C.E.O.'s performances, so to speak. However, the author of this book disagrees. He points out that the greatness of a CEO is not measured by the absolute returns generated by the companies they lead, but should instead be gauged by comparing the compound annual returns of peers and the overall market over the same period. If a CEO can deliver better returns than their peers and the overall market, they deserve to be assigned the word great. This book profiles eight great but little-known CEOs, describing them as outsiders. However, despite their lower profiles, they were able to beat their peers and Jack Welch hands down. On average, these outsiders outperformed the S&P 500 index by more than 20 times and their peers by more than 7 times. These great CEOs all have one common characteristic, they see capital allocation as a core task. This book is not only intended for managers and entrepreneurs, but also for ordinary people. Using the criteria of outsiders mentioned in the book to validate investment opportunities is like holding a bright light in the chaotic business world, allowing you to embrace its uncertainty with open arms. The author of this book William Thorndike is the founder of Housatonic Partners, an established private equity firm. He is also a trustee of the Stanford Business School Trust and president of College of the Atlantic Trust. He is also the chairman of U.S. coal giant Consol Energy and a board member of several well-known firms. In addition to these positions, he also serves as a guest lecturer at Harvard Business School and Stanford Business School. He has experience in both management and investment, having been praised by monumental figures such as Warren Buffett, Dell Incorporated's chairman and CEO Michael Dell, and Bill Ackman, a rising star in the investment field. In this bookie, we'll look at the core ideas of this book from two perspectives. Let's see what the most critical job of a great CEO is, and identify the criteria that can be used to determine the greatest CEO of our time. Part 1, Enterprise Management from the Perspective of Capital Allocation Part 2, Wise Capital Allocation Methods The most important attribute of a great CEO is that they are masters of capital allocation. They allocate the company's resources in a way that maximizes returns to shareholders. Buffet once emphasized that after 10 years on the job, a CEO whose company annually retains earnings equal to 10% of net worth will have been responsible for the deployment of more than 60% of all the capital at work in the business. Every day, great CEOs ponder how to efficiently allocate the enterprise's resources, manage the enterprise from the perspective of capital allocation, and then invest the generated cash flow into projects that can create higher returns. So, more specifically, how do great CEOs manage their enterprises from the perspective of capital allocation? Let's take a look at the first CEO. This individual oversaw a company on the verge of bankruptcy and managed it from the perspective of capital allocation to create excess returns while also saving it from going bust. His name is Bill Anders. His approach involved divesting inefficient businesses and investing capital into more efficient ones to improve the company's overall efficiency. In just three years, he transformed his company from $600 million in debt to $5 billion in cash. His company was General Dynamics.